I will address some of the limitations that we need to be aware of when we uh, interpret data from this uh, AI-based studies. So uh, we learned a lot about deep learning this afternoon and uh, why it is deep. It is deep because it involves uh, multiple layers. And the concept of uh, neural network here is about inputs, outputs, and the multiple layers in the neural network um, basically is used to identify, to detect features. And the predominant types of new networks are the convoluted neural networks, or CNN. And uh, all the studies right now, uh, in um, uh, particularly in ophthalmology, most of these studies are based on CNN. Uh, but what is CNN? What is convolution? Convolution uh, in CNN is performed on the input data with the use of a filter or a kernel to produce a feature map. So convolution is about merging of data, the merge uh, between the input data and the filter. Here is an example demonstrating how we can apply a filter to extract features. Imagine here we have a two by two uh, image map digitalized. Uh, this is the input. And the filter we apply is um, something uh, expressed in the matrix. And what we learn about neural network here is convolution is about merging the filter and the input. And basically is uh, the multiplication of these two matrices. And by extracting the features here, we are getting a new input to the next layer of network. Here is um, a cartoon illustrating how we can apply a filter to extract features. Here we are interested in, for example, uh, um, outlining the edges of the, of the picture. And different filters would enable us to identify specific features of the inputs. Um, in this illustration, uh, we learn that the deeper the layer we go through, the more abstract the feature is. In the initial layers of the network, we usually can identify, um, uh, our, for example, outline of certain objects or the color of the objects. So these are the superficial layers. But when we go deeper, the information becomes more abstract. So new network is about extracting all these individual features, and these individual features are then encoded, compared with the input to uh, get an error rate. And through this back propagation, uh, the neural network modifies ways, modifies filters, and then we would have um, an, an estimation of how accurate, how uh, sensitive or specific the performance is. Here is the uh, very first paper, one of the very first papers illustrating how a neural network can be applied for detection of glaucoma. This paper is actually not designed to detect glaucoma. Uh, we learned about this from Daniel's talk. Uh, it's based on a DM screening uh, network, uh, but we are also detecting AMD and possible glaucoma, which is defined as uh, coupled to this ratio more than 0.8 or the presence of a narrow neuroatinal rim or the presence of a retinal nerve fibular defects. So we're detecting coexisting condition in the uh, DR screening program. And what we uh, learned from this paper is that they applied the CNN, uh, they use transfer learning, uh, CNN, uh, this, in this paper the architecture is a VGG or visual uh, geometry group in OSFET. It called it uh, 16 because this CNN got 16 layers. Um, the numbers here are not so difficult to understand, um, which I uh, already mentioned earlier. Uh, there are many filters in this new network. All these filters are in the size of three by three. So these are the matrices, these are the filters supply. And we have 64, for example, here of these filters in the first layer, and then another 64 filters, and then it um, go, through this, go through these 16 layers of neural network, and then it get an answer whether there is or there is no possible glaucoma. Uh, I just highlight uh, the performance for glaucoma detection here, and this paper show a pretty good diagnostic performance for detecting possible glaucoma. 
we have an AUC area under the receiver characteristic curve of uh, 0.94, which is a pretty good diagnostic performance indicator. Uh, if you have one, that means the discriminating power uh, of the new network here is 100%. If it is 0.5, that means it's um, 50%, 50%, and basically it's by chance for the discrimination. Um, the sensitivity and specificity are relatively high. And then we have another paper. This paper uh, was uh, um, published in ophthalmology and is um, done using data collected from China, using fundus photographs uh, to identify, to detect glaucoma. Again, it's a very simple new network determining whether there is or there is no glaucoma using fundus pictures. And in this paper, they use uh, the Google Net, which is another kind of CNN. Uh, the architecture is a little bit more complicated. It has 22 layers. Uh, in addition to that, uh, this uh, new network uh, includes uh, the inception modules, uh, which you see there are loops. Um, and there, are, um, there are many that boxes in the network indicating that the um, information is passed not just sequentially, uh, but also there are these modules where you have information running parallel. Uh, they are, they are convolution running parallel in this inception modules. So they apply this uh, Google Net, and again, they observe pretty good diagnostic performance, AUC of um, about uh, of 0 0.96, uh, 0 0.98, and with uh, sensitivity and specificity more than 92%. And then uh, we have um, a new paper, uh, which was published just a month ago. And this time, it's not just about determining whether there is or there's no glaucoma, but it's about using fundus photograph to predict average retinal nerve fibular thickness. So they used uh, retinal nerve fibular thickness measured by OCT, and then they compared it with the uh, new network predicted um, um, average retinal nerve fiber thickness. And again, this paper used the Microsoft ResNet. Again, is another type of CNN. Uh, and what they found is that they, they observed pretty high correlation between the predicted nerve fiber thickness and the actual measured retinal nerve fiber thickness. And the coefficient of determination in this um, analysis is about 0.7. That means 70% of the relationship can be explained by this uh, linear relationship. And what they also observe is that the average retinal nerve fiber thickness predicted by a new network has a performance comparable to the actual uh, average retinal nerve fiber thickness measured by, by, by the spectral domain OCT. So they didn't find a significant difference in the area under the uh, ROC curve. So I can end the talk by saying, well, AI has a high sensitivity and specificity for detection of glaucoma. But is it really the case? So when we, un when, when we interpret the data presented by this paper, we need to understand what are the limitations of AI for glaucoma detection. All these studies rely on fundus photograph uh, to determine glaucoma to predict retinal nerve fiber thickness. But we know color fundus photographs actually is not enough, is not sufficient for evaluation of the retinal nerve fiber defects or to assess new retinal rim dimension. Because retinal nerve fiber layer and new retinal rim, they are three dimensional structure. And fundus photograph are basically two-dimensional structure. So we are not able to get the additional dimension um, of the optic disk uh, structures just using fundus photograph. And that's why when we look at uh, the false negative case examples demonstrated from this study, uh, we can see that those examples, here are two examples illustrating to you, uh, AI would not be able to tell you the retinal nerve fiber defects, and 
there are also false positive cases where in, uh, in eyes with large optic discs, where you have large gut, this eye could be falsely labeled as glaucoma. And again, uh, in eyes with myopia, AI would fail to um, identify the true diagnosis. And this is some, again, case examples uh, from the paper uh, by Medeiros. Uh, and in this paper, he used uh, fundus photograph to predict average retinal nerve fiber thickness. And we are looking at examples demonstrating underestimation and overestimation of the retinal nerve fiber thickness in these two, two case examples. Again, what we observe here is that when we have big cup, AI tends to uh, underestimate uh, retinal nerve fiber thickness, but when we look at the actual retinal nerve fiber thickness, in this case, in the right panel, the retinal nerve fiber thickness is actually pretty normal. And then in eyes with relatively normal looking neuroretinurem, again, AI would fail to uh, accurately predict uh, the, the average retinal nerve fiber thickness. So these uh, underestimation and overestimation explain why they are 30% of variants that would not be able to, 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 to be uh, predicted accurately by the AI. And then another issue that we need to be aware of uh, when we study these papers is that uh, it's the ground truth for training neural network reliable. All these papers, they uh, rely on um, professional glaucoma specialists to uh, label whether the optic disc photograph is normal or glaucomatous. But we know from this photograph, actually it's not very reliable, even among glaucoma specialists in determining uh, glaucomatous changes. And we know the inter-observer agreement of optic disc evaluation is actually moderate. And uh, this study done by uh, Dr. Jampel in Hopkins uh, demonstrate that even among glaucoma specialists, we have poor agreement in evaluating optic disc changes. So if we have poor or moderate in the observer agreement, we would expect the AI would also have poor to moderate agreement among different um, uh, networks trained in different centers or by different groups. And we also know that's why optic disc photography is rarely used as a reference standard in the diagnostic studies for glaucoma. We usually would you rely on visual view as the reference standard when we compare structural uh, measurements for diagnostic evaluation of glaucoma and optic disc photograph because the sensitivity and specificity for identifying glaucoma is not that reliable. Um, would OCT be a future of AI instead of optic disc photograph? It can be. Here is a paper done by uh, Dr. Hood. Uh, this is not a deep learning paper, but he is using a concept called hybrid deep learning. Uh, he adopted the Alex Lent and um, using the same weights of this new network, uh, put this weight, put the, the outputs of the neural network into a random forest to uh, come up with parameters to help differentiate glaucomatous from non glaucomatous eyes. Uh, the field is exciting. We're seeing a lot of AI-based um, technologies being FDA-approved. Uh, in ophthalmology, we have uh, just, uh, um, uh, we all heard, uh, is uh, the IDX has been adopted even in the healthcare system in the US. The future is promising, but we need to be aware of the potential limitations. Thank you.